Well, I'm excited tonight. I've got a good friend of mine, Noel Robertson, all the way from the UK coming to us live tonight. He's going to share what God's got on his heart. You know, he's an awesome man of God. He's a mouthpiece of God. And uh, I'm excited you're here. Welcome, Noel. Hey, listen, it's great. It's great. It's great to be a part of uh, what you're doing, Ben. You know, I'm so excited. Missing you. I mean, I only saw you last year, but missing you. Lots of things happening. But how's things going with you? Oh, they're going great over here. And uh, God is up to some awesome things. Just I can feel it in the spirit. Just an urgency. And, uh, you know, the Lord's been telling me the word intensification. You know, it's time that we intensify our prayer life, our, our relationship, our intimacy with God, because uh, I think we're getting ready to see a shaking take place in the world. And uh, we got to know him. Well, I mean, you, you're talking about that. In this part of the world, there's some exciting things happening. Uh, you know, in, in, in our local news, in, in, in our European news, we're, we're seeing so many things with countries uh, their systems are failing around Europe, you know, uh, with the, the recent news with, with uh, Spain and, and some of the other countries where their, their economies are failing. Even us in the United Kingdom, um, just, just, so many things are, just so many things are happening here. And we're, we're actually sensing that God has been preparing the atmosphere for the miraculous. You know, sometimes you have two opposing, two opposing things, and, and 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 you need a plus with a negative. It's almost like you need the darkness so the light can shine brighter. And we are seeing that the world is getting a darker place economically, socially, spiritually. We're seeing so many changes happening in our societies. But this is actually a perfect opportunity uh, for the church to arise. You know, so Amen. exciting things are happening. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. You know, and I, as I travel, and you know, you've been around it as well as I have for a long time and we've seen the good the bad the ugly side and uh, you know I, I see us so many times getting caught up in our our uh, just systems the way we do business the professional Christians we've made our church services you know we got them dialed in the music's right the lights are right and everything's going but it's like when people leave they're still hungry they're still wanting they're not being filled and uh, I feel like there's a generation who is thirsty for more of God, for the genuine, the purity. And uh, what, what do you see taking place? Well, it's quite interesting because, I mean, earlier this week, on, on, you know, last week, I should say, um, one of the words that God's been preparing to me is just the presence, his presence. And he gave me this incredible picture of, of car manufacturers. You know, the church was like car manufacturers where we build cars. You know, you've got the Mercedes, you've got the Lexuses, you've got the Mustangs in America, you've got the Cadillacs. Over here, you've got Ford cars. We've got so many different cars. And, and we've become professional car builders. And, and the cars are to transport us to the thing that, the whole church is crying for the presence of God. And it seems quite amazing that I have this picture of people never getting out the cars because we have built the cars so well. We have those, you know, those big limos you guys got in America, <laughs> those big stretch ones that take so many people. We've got these cars that are made with so many details, so many incredible details that people don't want to get out of their cars. They actually want to live in their cars. And can you imagine people on a journey going into a vehicle to get to a place call the presence of God, but never ever stepping out of their vehicles and never fully experiencing the presence of God. You know, I likened it to uh, going on a trip to the seaside. If the presence of God was the seaside, for example, um, and people get in the vehicle, you can drive to the seaside and you can wind the windows down and people smell the sea breeze and they'll, they'll feel the atmosphere of the seaside, but never get out the car. And I kind of sense that the Holy Spirit is moving across this world saying, I want people to find my presence again. That's how it was in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, God made man. He put him in the Garden of Eden. The most important thing in the garden was the presence of God. Yeah. And I believe that God has put that stirring up people saying, we want more than just church, great lights and great music. We want to experience the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we've become so good at, like you said, creating that vehicle. I, I call it a synthetic anointing where we can manipulate your feelings and it feels almost like his presence and and your mind is telling you that it's all happening but you leave and nothing's changed because there was no genuine presence i know when we come into god's presence it changes us it it does something and and people are just crying out for that true presence uh, because that's where we were created to live to dwell in his presence and we can actually as we walk with God, can learn how to be carriers of that presence and carry his presence with us. And that's what the world is waiting to see. So, yeah, man, I, I, that was awesome. I mean, I recently just uh, got invited to uh, Downing Street 
uh, which is the home of our Prime Minister, a bit like the White House, okay? Um, I was invited with a couple of worship leaders, just two of us and many, many other church leaders. And one of the things that our Prime Minister said, uh, you know, uh, amongst the politics of everything, he said something very profound. He declared that the country was waiting for the church to arise. Mm. It was waiting for the bride of Christ to arise. I mean, I added the bride of Christ because he doesn't use that word, but <laughs> he, he says that the, 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 this country is waiting because the church has been the barometer for spirituality in our nation. It's been the barometer for social action. It's been the barometer for all the things that are good about uh, the, the the English the English in the United Kingdom, and and he said he wants things to return back to return back to that place where the church was at the forefront of social action, the forefront the forefront of spiritual proaction, and I actually believe this was a mandate from heaven that we'd have our prime minister say to some of the leading church leaders, this is the time for you to rise up. I believe there's a revival going on. You know, one of the songs that I love to sing is a song called Rain. At the moment, we've had three days of rain, and they still say there's a drought on in the United Kingdom. That's an interesting <laughs> thing. I actually believe that there's a spiritual call for rain in this nation yes. where the church is revived once again to take its place and that can't happen in church that is seeker friendly right. that can't happen in church that's just got lights and all that kind of stuff and people don't have an encounter with jesus right. i believe that we are set to pronounce and lift jesus high and that's what i believe is the beginning of a revival in the lives of people revival is not others it happening to others but revival is about it happening to me that's right and when it and happens to you see. yeah yeah, and that's an awesome analogy man, about the, the vehicles and the things we've created. And, you know, I'm not against the lights. I'm not against the rock no. show, whatever, as long as the presence of God is what's respected and welcomed. And, uh, you know, it, it takes time to, you don't just run into God's presence just half-heartedly. Just, it's, we got to respect Almighty God, you know, and understand who our God is. And, and uh, it is time for the church to arise. And we've got to accept our responsibility. And people have got to realize, man, I, I play a role in this. I'm part of this movement and I'm part of, you know, revival. It, like you said, it has to happen to me so it can happen to some. You can't give what you don't have. And before Absolutely. a corporate revival, it comes that personal revival. And, that, and that's what God's calling people to come closer, to become more intimate with him. And, you know, like the rain, uh, something about rain is it doesn't fall. Like we think the rain falls, but it's gravity that actually pulls the rain down. And Absolutely. we've got to understand that we, we've got to become the, we've got to pull on the reign of God. God's got the clouds full. They're yeah. ready to dump, but we've got to pull on them. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you, you were sharing just then about, about uh, revival beginning with us. You know, one of the things is that um, I, I found that oftentimes the church, we, we do pray about revival coming. And, 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 and one of the things we pray about revival happening somewhere else, you know, we, we can pray about in the Middle East, we can pray about Africa, we can pray about India, we can pray about all these places that are so-called, especially the Western church. Yeah. But here comes God saying, look, no, no, I want the revival to begin in you. That's right. I want it to begin you. And it begins, revival is a revelation. You know, I, I, I've mm -hmm. been speaking about uh, various things at the moment. And one of the things that I said was a generation is not defined by its age. Okay, a generation is not defined where it comes from, neither neither where it is, it, you know, what it's doing, but a generation is de de defined by revelation. Yeah. I really believe we're in a season where God is revealing himself to people. And, and revival, you know, the Bible says that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Yes. Now, oftentimes we look at that word judgment, we go, my God, God's going to beat us up. It's the God of love. We can't tell the world about judgment. We've got to tell him about love. But the Bible says judgment begins in the house of God. And what I actually feel this judgment is about is about where where God is reconciling everything back to himself in Colossians. The Bible talks about that, where God is bringing everything back to its original, yes. to its original purpose. And God says, I created man not for the Garden of Eden. I created him for my presence. I created him to dwell in my presence. That's where he's the most empowered because when he was in the presence of God, he had dominion over everything that was in that garden. He named everything. I believe that in this season, this is part of the prophetic. As we go into the intimacy, into the presence of God, this is what happens. God begins to speak to us and we begin this process of speaking to things that have come out of a line. We need to speak to the lost and the broken and say, come back in alignment, be healthy.
yes. be, be healthy and be right. I believe that this reconciling involves us. And this is the, the prophetic act that God is using. In, in, in Europe, we, we've seen pockets. I was in Denmark uh, a month ago. Where, where some 300 uh, students from around, around Europe are gathered for worship. Uh, you know, some of the guys from IHOP were there and various people from around Europe. And God, God was saying to me, I'm beginning to stir Europe. I'm beginning to stir my nations. I'm beginning to stir my places. And what he's stirring up, he's stirring up specific people who will hear the voice of God, who have intimacy with him, but will also be kingdom people who will begin to do things. Yeah. You know? and, and I'm excited about this season. And, you know, we're seeing God do the miraculous. Yeah. We're seeing God move. And we're, we're encouraging it and fanning the flames of it. So, Ben, we can't wait for you to come here, you know, to, to join us.